Welcome back to Bay Area Focus and please welcome Connie Hale, author of The Natives Are Restless. Her book, we're, we're dovetailing segments here and, and you were telling me, no coincidence, that uh, what we talked about with Patrick, his performance, The Natives Are Restless and the book, same title. Yes, well I was interested, I've been writing about Hawaiian culture my entire career as a journalist and I very badly wanted to write about hula and when Kumu Patrick told me that he was bringing back this show, which mm -hmm. is kind of a seminal work of his, and that he was going to be updating it After for today. After 20 some years. Yes. Yes. I, I could see the book in my head. It, I could see the title, really? the, the, the Natives of Restless was the perfect title for the story that I wanted to tell. And tell me, what is it about the hula and the history and th that really, you said you've been writing about it your entire career? I have been. Well, I'm from Hawaii. I was born in the country on Oahu and uh, love Hawaiian music, love hula, danced hula as a little kid, uh, love the Hawaiian language. I've studied the Hawaiian language a little bit and written about it. So um, it's a, it's, I call it a well that never runs dry. It's this mm. incredibly rich, deep culture that no one knows about really in its authenticity. So my kuleana, we say in Hawaii, my, I feel that part of my obligation is to write about this thing that I know that's so misunderstood uh, and there was no better way to tell the story that I wanted to tell than through this particular choreographer and uh, the scope of his work. And, and tell me more, more about that, the scope of his work, because mm -hmm. you're obviously able to delve into it in a different way, the written language, yes. whereas he's they're performing it. Movement language. Yes, yeah, yeah, you have two yeah. things, two communications going yeah. on. Yeah, and it was a little bit of a challenge in making that work in, on yeah. the page, you know, uh, to writing about hula on the page. So the work, typically, you mentioned going to Hawaii as a tourist. Right. You might see some hula if you're lucky at the hotel. At the hotel, exactly. And, That's it. And there's nothing wrong with that hula. It's probably very seriously done, uh, probably traditional hula. You may see one or two dances, and that's what you go away with. Um, one or two dances is not hula. Mm. Hula, there are so many. There are dances that are ancient, that use ancient percussion instruments from before Western contact. There's a whole suite of dances, not as sweet as too small a word, that were created in the 19th century when Hawaiians started integrating Western. They loved the guitar. They loved, mm. the, they created the ukulele. So there's a whole um, world of dances that are more modern in that they integrate Western uh, influences, musical and also cultural influences. Now fast forward to the 20th century, to the 21st century, you have someone like Patrick Makuakane who grew up in Hawaii, who grew up as a modern contemporary guy. He listens to electronic music, he listens to Michael Jackson, he listens to opera, and he's integrating those musics, musics into his work. So to make hula more representative of Hawaii today and of all of us today for all of us as an art form but there's the challenge of holding on to the tradition there is. right mm -hmm. so how do you balance that how well I, um, how he balances it is that for example because I'm a student of his I've been taking hula from him for 20 years so in class it's very strict we hew to the traditions, uh, maybe not as seriously as was done 100 years ago, but uh, we hew to many of the traditions. We are um, required to understand certain Hawaiian values. It's very traditional. Mm. We never dance to Michael Jackson in <laughs> class. It's only on the stage that he starts to blend and play, presenting both traditional, the ancient dances, which is, I think, the clip that you showed what was representative showed? Mm -hmm. of, of one, one of those really early dances or early style of dancing. Then the modern dances, which is more what you associate, the girls in the fluid dresses, and then some very groundbreaking um, uh, eye-opening work as well. Well, you, you've been doing it long enough. You've been a student long mm -hmm. enough. When younger kids come in, do they want to adhere to the tradition or do they want to put their own sort of modern brand on it? That's such an interesting question because I think that what I see at least is that there's very much respect for the tradition. I mean, mm. there would be, there's nothing more wonderful than being, being able to take one of these older dances and learn it and understand the tale. It, it's all in Hawaiian, so there's a lot of work that's required to even understand it. Um, I'm sure at home people are doing the hula moves and other <laughs> dances, but with, right. within the context of hula, I think most of us just want to do these dances very well. Tell
Tell us about the book, because before we run out of time, I want people to know how they can get a hold of the book. So we decided, if you're going to put hula on the page, uh, we decided to go for co full color photography, and we call it an intellectual coffee table book. Hmm. In that, it tells the whole story of hula, it tells a lot about the history of Hawaii, and it uses Patrick McCulkane's biography as a keyhole into all of that. So in the foreground is Patrick McCulkane and his work. That's the cornerstone. Yeah, and, and in the background is this the, the story of hula going back for many, many centuries and uh, meanwhile coupled with the text which I hope is written in an entertaining way <laughs> are these fabulous photos I'm sure it shows is. over the last 30 years. Great. Connie, thank you so much for being here. I really Mahalo. appreciate it. Mahalo. And if you want more information on the Natives Are Restless, log on to what's the NaleHulu.org. 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 You got it. I finally get it by the end of the show, almost. <laughs> Coming up, a project that's bringing a voice to homelessness through incredible personal stories. Stick around for that.